Ooh, I really should watch some normal movies. I'm, I haven't watched a normal film since, for a while right now, so I think I need to get my head straight. Um, Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, if you know anything about B-movies, you probably would have heard about this film. Now, one of the most famous things about this film is that Roger Ebert, yes, the critic Roger Ebert, wrote the screenplay. And it's usually one of the things that Roger Ebert haters mention to just bring Roger Ebert down there. Like, oh, he's just a failed screenplay writer who wants to put put down other people's movie. He's such a douchebag. He's a fat slob or whatever the fuck they say. But, you know, Roger Ebert wrote it. The other thing is that it's directed by Russ Meyer. Now, or Russ Meyer. It's probably Russ Meyer, I think. I'm going to call it Russ Meyer for now. If I'm wrong... It's probably Russ, it's Russ Meyer. Let's call him Russ Meyer. I might be wrong, but I don't give a shit. English is not my first language. Stop griping on me. Um, Russ Meyer directed the film. Um, the only two films I've seen of his is, you know, so far, not including this movie, were Faster Pussycat Kill Kill. Yes, that's actually the title. And Super Vixens. Now, he's kind of considered as the Orson Welles of B-movies, and... He usually casts, you know, like, playboy models. Women with really big boobs. And um, this film is supposed to be like the Citizen Kane of B-movies. Now, this is where this, your standards needs to be adjusted. If you're going to keep your standards, you're just like, no, I don't care if it's a B-movie. I'm going to keep my standards. If it's bad, it's bad, and, it's, and that's all it is. Then you're probably going to hate this movie. Um... And, and if you're gonna, if, but if you're like, I'm gonna sacrifice some of my standards and, and take some of the quirks of this movie and take them as a, as a certain positive element of filmmaking, of making this movie. Um, if you're with, within that mindset, you would probably have the same opinion as mine or maybe something else. Because here's the thing. Here were the things that I could not stand even though I tried to adjust my standards. First of all, the cinematography throughout the film is bland and usually without purpose. There's a lot of scenes where they kind of do that stilted, the kind of stilted shot, um, just like in Battlefield Earth. And there's no reason to do that because right after this shot happens, they just go back to the straight shot. And then this shot happens again. It's just like, what the fuck are you doing? Why is this happening? What is the point of this? And they never seem to indicate to any of that. It's just such pointless shots, and most of the shots are usually very standard. There's nothing really going on. The acting is very over the top and at times very desperate. Some of the women here are not doing at doing their best job at all. And especially um what was her? Eddie Williams? I, I'm forgetting her name. Eddie Williams, she plays this um adult film actress in this film, and her performance, it's I get, I'll give it to her. It's sexy, but it's so awkwardly sexy. Like, it's so over-the-top sexy. It's not even porn sexy. Like, porn sexy is natural to a certain extent. This is just, like, moving in a weird, sensual way. It's belly dancing sexy, which is not sexy at all, let me just remind you. Um, the screenplay is all over the place. You know, the resolutions happen before the climax, um, and certain resolutions just happen out of nowhere, or happen out of extreme situations that weren't built up to. You know, certain things are just thrown away. Like, there's this character, and she was kind of one of the more important characters. Like, we actually see her, like, getting an abortion in this movie. And at the end, she dies. And the character's like, oh my god, she's dead! And then one of the guys who broke his legs like, hey, I can feel my legs again. They're like, oh, forget about her. He can walk again. And she's forgotten. She's never mentioned after that scene ever again. She's just, no, she did not exist. Fuck her. We're not going to mention it. We're not going to mourn her for even a minute. No, he can walk again. That's more important. Um, you know, and at the end of the film, and I'm not kidding. The, at, at the end of the movie, for about a solid minute, or maybe two, the narrator actually starts to, like, force some symbolism 
into what the film was trying to say. And he starts analyzing what the characters represent and what they are. And it's just like, what the fuck are you doing? That's supposed to be what the critics or what the audience should do. You don't need to spoon feed us about what this all means because it's our job to interpret it. You don't need to desperately put some meaning into it. It's our job to what to choose whether this film is even worth of a, that amount of analysis. And the thing is, I think it's because Roger Ebert wrote it and he was just so desperate to put in some meaning because because if you just look at it from like an outside perspective, it does feel like a very shallow movie. But yes, if you really get into the analysis, it does make sense. It does show. It's just that it feels so desperate to just horseshoe in that at the end. Now, these were my personal standards that I tried to adjust, but I failed. But still, I told myself, it's a B movie. I should at least let go of some of my standards and see this film in a different light than other movies. And with that in mind, this is what I came up with, because the editing in this movie is very frantic, it's very schizophrenic, it's quick, it's, it's much more, it has much more speed than the average film. It, there's this great scene where they start introducing what LA is like, and they rhyme with each other's dialogue, with, you know, this main character, this woman, and this guy, and they start rhyming, they throw out lines, it's so quickly done, it's kind of off-kilter. But the thing is, it's so consistently off-kilter. The, the editing is not terrible in just one scene. It's terrible throughout the scene. It's schizophrenic throughout the film. And because it's so consistent, you get that this is being done in an intentional manner. And because it's so off-kilter, you kind of get into it. It's like listening to the baseline in Joy Division. You know, it's off-kilter, but because it's so consistently off-kilter, you just kind of get into the mood. You are interested. It c catches you off guard every time because it's so unusual. Um, the dialogue is so pretentious. And yet, yet again, it's very consistently pretentious that it's almost, you know, charismatic. You can honestly see a lot of Roger Ebert's fingerprints throughout um, the screenplay. One of my favorite lines, and I... I I bet you that I'm going to use this line somewhere in my life one day. It's this line where this guy is talking about having vengeance upon thee. And he uses the phrase, the black sperm of my vengeance. I don't know what the fuck that means. I'm not even sure if it has any meaning. And I'm pretty sure it doesn't really originate from anything. But I swear to God, I fucking love that line. I'm going to use it one day. Um... And it, it definitely captures the late 60s and the early 70s so well. Not just because of the music. It's just the whole mood of the film. The drugs, the drinking, the hippies, you know, the rock and roll music, the, the, the you know, the costumes, the hair. Everything feels so late 60s and early 70s. It, it's, it feels like a time capsule of that time. Um, just like how the, the TV show, My So-Called Life, is kind of the time capsule of the mid-90s. Um, and I think the main thing the film is trying to do is kind of show the CD underbellies of showbiz. And if that was what they were going for, they kind of did a great job at it. The drugs, the sex, the schemes, the fetish parties, it's all there. And it's captured in bright colors and at times when it, when it's needed gritty colors and because everything's so off kilter it brings us a new sense of crudeness and sleaziness to the whole thing it is all effectively done if that's the main thing that the film is trying to do and the acting's all very good as well so outside of the few awkward moments and the over top and desperate desperate ones you know so if those are my standards, I, w I think this film's okay. It's it's on the bad side of okay, so I'll probably give it like a 2.5 out of 4. But still, I think it's worth a watch. It's definitely one of the more charismatic B-movies I've ever seen. So, watch it with your watch it at your own risk and make your own opinion. That's probably my opinion. So yeah, um, 2.5 out of 4, Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. 
There's a lot of fucking boobs, so if you're a guy, you're probably gonna watch it anyway, so bye.